Greetings to everyone all around the world. Tonight happened to be Tuesday, March the 3rd, 2020. Uh, it's about 6.31 p.m. 2020, the sign of the vision, the sign of change. I'd like to greet all people all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessing of God be with all of you all. It doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor religious beliefs may be. It doesn't matter whether you're the richest to the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you like me, like my YouTube videos, like what I stand for, whether you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. It doesn't matter whether you're my family, friends, or my proclaimed enemies. It doesn't matter whether you light-skinned or dark-skinned. I greet all of you all with the same universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Uh, tonight, I want to talk about how the a pledge deletion, some of the things inside of it. You know, it said we one nation under God. You know, and it start off saying, I pledge allegiance to the flag. When it first started, it was, I pledge allegiance to my flag. The divergence was the, the divergence was changed. And you see, if we are one nation, like it said, under God, and then it says indivisible, meaning there's no way of separating us as human beings in the nation of America the United States. Now, it's saying no division. But it's no if it's no division, all right now, if, if it's no division then, and, and this this is not directed to, to everybody, but we know that there's no doubt or contradiction that there is division. The Supreme Court just recently, I believe it was today, the they divided on the shielding of the immigration law or something uh, dealing with the immigration. The Supreme Court is nine of them. They divided. If we was unseparable if we, there's no way of separating us and we are one nation under God, then why do they have a Republican Party and a Democratic Party? If we one nation up under God, why is it that certain, not all, certain white people don't want blacks living in certain areas if we was one nation under God. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good human beings in all nationalities. There are some good human beings, there are some bad human beings in all nationalities. But we have to keep it straight, keep it real. This is not one nation under God. And most definitely, we are separated people. It's a fact that when you go to court, nine out of 10 times, if you're taking a jury trial, hey, how y'all doing? That's the young Obamas down here. I ain't gonna put y'all on the camera right now. Especially look, look at Miss Obama smiling there. Y'all take care, where the little one at? All right, all right, but it, it you 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 can't get an all black jury, but that ain't what I come to talk about. If we was one nation under God, and we was unseparable, you see what I'm saying? 
if, if, if we standing on the same principles, then tell me why my 13 and 14 year old daughter down here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County, tell me why would the police from the Charleston, Missouri Police Department on May the 19th, 2008, a little after midnight on Malcolm X's birthday. Why would they come in my house without a warrant, without probable cause? You see what I'm saying? And take my then one and two year old daughters out of the house for me, a working man, black man. Ain't out here selling drugs, ain't out here game banging. All I'm doing is being a man, taking care of my daughters while they mother, the same police department that came in my house and took them, knew that they mother was out in the streets for three days and three nights on Haron crack and selling up a hand. Why would they come in there and take that if we one nation under God? You see what I'm saying? And it ain't no division. I'll tell you why it would happen and because I speak up against corrupted police, corrupted judges, corrupted black officials. It, didn't, it don't make a difference. But then again, why on February the 6th, 2012, after a white bus driver in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County in the Charleston R1 school, Her Her uh, Hearns Elementary School, why was my then five-year-old daughter left on a bus with a white bus driver? And when I complained about it on the first, it took the Charleston, Missouri police officer five days after I complained to the school to somewhat get involved, but why wouldn't she write a police report for me if she didn't want to file that? Why did she try to question my daughter without my presence, without my permission, and without my knowledge? I'm gonna tell you why she could do it, because I'm black, my daughter's is black, Puerto Rican, and Dominican, and she white. Do that sound like one nation under God? You see, why when I got my daughters back after the police, Charles Missouri Police Department, along with the Susanna Family Wesley Learning Center here in Charles, Missouri, in some parts of, of uh, East Prairie, Missouri, most of these black preachers, most of the, all the blacks that was working for Susanna Wesley Learning Center back in 2008, most of them work at 700 Elm Street or Cy Williams uh, Street here in Charleston, Missouri. The, the C.F. Bowen Center, formerly known as the Lincoln High School, where the only place blacks can go to school until, tell me this here, why did they have to file a lawsuit against the Charleston Consolidated School Number 7 also known today as the Charleston R1 School District here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County. Why did blacks have to file a lawsuit to be able to go to the same school that the white people was going to? to? We wasn't, we wasn't in, 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 inseparable. We wasn't one nation under God. You see what I'm saying? It took a lawsuit to do that. But let me keep on. I can't stop. Why on February the 13th, 2020, the year of the vision, the change, my 13 and 14 year old daughters couldn't walk from my house here on one side of Vine to Vine and Main Street to go to the Family Dollar at 601 Main Street, South Main Street in Charleston, Missouri store number 9411, district manager, black, Cat or Catherine, don't know her last name. Uh, one of the other manager there, uh, Tammy, 
Why my daughters couldn't walk in there without them allowing one of their workers, not a supervisor, not not a not a uh, manager, but one of their workers? Why couldn't my 13 to 14 year old daughter walk in there without Teresa Danielle Carr, C A R R? On some of them I said Clark, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Why couldn't my daughters walk up in there without Teresa identifying my young daughter, 13 year old? Asking her is a wig on her head. A daughter still the way I taught them. Some children would have probably cussed her out. Ain't none of your business. But my daughter said, yes, ma'am. Even though she feel offended. You see what I'm saying? Being a black child and being victimized by the police department, the courts and things down here, ever since she was one years old, when she was taken out of this house. I've got them back up a little bit. When I got them back 90 days later after they took them out of the house in 2008, her arm was broke. No police report could be made. The only one, no, only one documentation that took it is their doctor. And then the doctor in St. Louis, they put the cast on the arm. But the Charles, Missouri Police Department, the state's attorney, the judges, the Susanna Wesley Family Learning Center, who's supposed to be advocate for victims. My daughter was a victim. It wasn't a victim for me. It was a victim for my daughter's name, the lady that gave birth to him, the female that gave birth to him, because she can't be a lady. She won't take care of kids. Susanna Wesley Learning Center and all these blacks down here, they know who they is. They victimized my daughter. But yet, they go in there, she actually she had a wig on her head. Then, when my daughter said, no ma'am, she said, you, don't, you know you don't supposed to be in here. My daughter want to know why. You know why, you and your mother come in here stealing. Then when her big sister, 14 years old, let this lady know my dad taught us right. We ain't gonna cuss you out, but produce the evidence. My dad taught us the law. Produce it. He didn't tell us to cuss you out. Little as you is, big as I am, I could have whooped you, but I didn't. You see what I'm saying? I asked you to produce it because me and my daughter don't have a mother or a stepmother. You didn't produce it. But then you had a Charleston Police Department again up under the same chief when they took him out of my house, under the same chief when they allowed a white bus driver to abuse my daughter at the Charleston R1 school district on a bus by himself, and they didn't write a police reporter, didn't they? Up under the same chief, Robert Bobby Hearns. Up under the same chief. Now, why did one of the police come in there? All I did is ask them to, uh, Give me the name of the person that accused my daughters of stealing. My daughters and them left out and called me. I made a complaint to the district manager who told me they was going to do something. But here it is, Monster Third, they ain't did nothing. But I'm doing something. I'm doing it the legal way. But I want to show Teresa Danielle Clark, Kat, the district manager, Tammy, and all you other people that work for, for Family Dollar, let me show you something about my daughters. They don't have to steal. They don't have to steal. You see this? It's paid for. That's paid for. You see that in the driveway? That's paid for. That Crown Vic paid for, fully paid for. That's paid for. You see what they're getting on now, Teresa? Danielle Clark, Cat District Manager, Tammy. That's fake. Did y'all steal? Did you steal that? No, sir. You sure you didn't steal that? Positive. Did you steal that bike? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. I don't know. You, you, we, can we go down to the dollar store and ask Teresa, Danielle Clark? Do y'all know who she is? Yes, sir. What she accused y'all of doing? Stealing. Who you coming there stealing with? Our mother, our stepmother. Do you have a mother or stepmother? Have you ever stole anything? No, sir, we Do you have to have a reason to steal anything? No, sir, anything you want, who get it for you? My dad. Anything you want, who get it for you? My dad. Huh? Y'all say peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. 